You know what slows me down more than a slow build? Hunting for the right file in a sea of tabs. Every click, every scroll, every... Wait, where was that again? It all adds up. And the bigger the code base, the worse it gets. You're jumping between files, chasing references, reviewing changes, and before you know it, your tab bar looks like a game of Tetris that you're losing badly. But what if your editor could just open exactly the files you need when you need them? No tabs, no clutter, no wasted motion. Well, that's what Zed's multi-buffer does. And today, I'm going to show you my top five ways to use it, from finding references and reviewing Git changes to working with AI, so you can keep your workspace and your brain clear and focused. Starting out at number five, we have Git diffs. You can open the project diff multi-buffer by using the control GD shortcut, or by searching for diff in the command palette. It's also accessible from the Git panel. This view shows all your git changes in one place. It's a bit like running git diff in the terminal, except in Z, it's editable. You can stage or unstage individual hunks or entire files before committing and pushing in the git panel or via the git CLI. As a bit of a bonus, multibuffers allow you to easily navigate to the file under your cursor with option enter via editor open excerpts in the command palette or by clicking the file name in the multibuffer. And if you're more of a mouse user, you can set the double click in multibuffer setting to open to open anywhere you double click with your mouse. Next up at number four, we have language server actions. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm coming into a code base and reading all the juicy functions contained within, I often want to see how those functions are being called. And the best way by far to do this is to use the language servers find all references functionality. The hotkey for this is option shift F12, or you can just command click on a symbol. This will open up all the places that function is referenced in your code base, including the definition. If you just want to see the definition of the symbol, you can go from its usage to its definition with F12, or again with command click. I use this all the time for checking where a variable was first defined. If you didn't already know, Z comes with built-in support for a number of programming languages. So if you're wondering if the language server for your language of choice is already installed, it probably is. And if not, it's likely available as a Z extension in the extension gallery. Now, AI is becoming all the rage these days. It seems like everyone and their dog has started vibe coding their own custom to-do apps. And while it's great for folks who can't code, making use of these tools can really speed up a software developer's workflow if you know how to use them. Which brings us nicely onto rank three on the list, reviewing changes made by the Z agent. I'm starting to lean into agentic editing more and more, but I still don't trust LLMs to write all my code completely unchecked especially when I'm collaborating with a team. Thankfully, Zed solves this problem using the multi-buffer. Once you've come to the end of an agentic editing session, you can click the Review Changes button in the Agent panel to open a multi-buffer showing all the edits the agent has made during your conversation. It's a lot like the Project Diff multi-buffer in that it's a diff view, but again, you can edit the code as you go and accept or reject individual changes. Or if you like everything you see, you can just click Accept All to pull all the unreviewed changes into your code base. But number two is probably my most frequent use of the multi-buffer. The only reason it's not in the number one spot is because that feature is so useful, but this one comes in at a very, very close second. And of course, I'm talking about project search. You probably already know you can search within a single buffer using Command F or by clicking the search icon. But you can also search in the whole project using Command Shift F too. And naturally, this uses the multi-buffer. I find myself using this all the time for massive find and replace operations, often when I'm reorganizing and need to update imports in multiple files at once. You get access to all the usual search options like regex or case-sensitive search and Z's powerful replace functionality too. Top tip, if you select some text before using the Command Shift F key binding, Z will populate the search field with that selected text text for you. This works in single buffer search too, and can save a whole lot of typing, especially if you're a Vim mode user like me. And finally, we end up at my absolute favorite use for the multi-buffer. This is a feature that I hope I never have to use, but 
when I do, it's really invaluable. And naturally, I'm on about language server diagnostics. Whenever you get something wrong in your code base, and let's admit, we all do, like referencing an undefined variable or getting a type wrong somewhere, your language server will likely surface that error as a diagnostic. The diagnostics pane in Z uses a multi-buffer to show you all the places that you've messed up so you can quickly go through and fix anything you need to. It can also show you any warnings, so if you're as picky as I am, you can make sure they're all sorted too. Z will show you the error or warnings alongside the line they originated on, so you don't even have to hover to see what's gone wrong. So simple, so easy. And if you're a real perfectionist like me, you can enable these inline diagnostics everywhere by setting diagnostics.inline to true in your settings.json. Just another fun little Z fact for you. That's all I've got time to talk about today, but it's possible I didn't quite cover everything. Did I miss out your favorite use of the multi-buffer? Let me know your best tip in the comments below and I'll pin the one I like the most. And if you're not already using Z but cannot wait to start using the multi-buffer, I can't blame you. Download Z at Z.dev. I'll see you in the next one.